why do you think he felt the need to um, invoke this very physical, very masculine metaphor and uh, backtrack in the end? Because he obviously did not follow up on his promise, even though I think many people would like him to. I, I'm sure such an encounter would have gone viral on YouTube. Yeah, Tony Abbott, our Prime Minister, thinks he's still fighting the Cold War. There's a lot of the Cold Warrior in him. He thinks he's back on a campus in the early 1970s, battling battling leftists, bat battling Maoists, um, uh, thinking it's his, his God-given mission to fight communism. He doesn't realise that the Cold War is over. I think that's a, a large part of the explanation for his adversarial behaviour. I'm just relieved, and I think most Australians are relieved, that in the end, in the end, the G20 went well, and I think it was very satisfactory for Russia. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, to some extent, this hawkish language reflects uh, a notable change in Australia's foreign policy. I mean, you've long been aligned with the United States, but it now appears that Australia is trying to be even holier than the Pope. As far as I understand it, were, uh, it was the Americans who asked Tony Abbott to tone down their anti-Russian rhetoric quite a bit. How do you explain this newfound hawkishness on Australia's part? I think, I think the government, the, this is a conservative government, a right-wing government, it came to power in September last year. I think through the Prime Minister especially, it's got some, some very combative instincts. And I don't think it's in Australia's interest to behave like this. Uh, we all value our security treaty with the United States, but sometimes our interests aren't the same as America's. And I think most Australians would like to hear Tony Abbott from time to time reflect a view that Australia, while a good ally of America's, is capable of independent thinking about international problems.